What's going on, though, friends? My name is M. Tinder and welcome back to another episode of The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask for the Nintendo 3DS. We're off up last time, we completed the Stone Tower Temple, and now in this part, we're going to see what hap was ha going on here in Akana Canyon now that we have saved um, Akana Canyon and all the spirits can now rest in peace. So, uh, the first thing that we can do is, now that we have all 15 stray fairies from Stone Tower Temple, we're gonna go ahead and head over here, and this is the, uh, Great Fairy Fountain of the Ikana region. So let's see what we got going on over here. We got a Golden Great Fairy. I don't think we've seen that in other Zelda games here. Oh, compassionate young one, I am the Great Fairy of Kindness. Thank you for returning my broken and shattered body to normal. As thanks, I grant you the Great Fairy Sword. And, ladies and gentlemen, we get the Great Fairy Sword. It is a very powerful weapon. So, um, I'll, you'll see me use it quite a bit. There is a downside to it, just like many powerful items. Every powerful item in video games have a thing going on where there's usually a pretty major downside to where the item is, uh, it makes the item not as good as it actually seems. Uh, but the Great Fairy Sword, what's really cool about this is, uh, well one, it does a lot of damage so you can overpower a lot of different things. Um, but then, um, you can actually see that it's an actual item and not an equipable item. And, um, uh, the reason that's the case is because, well, if you notice on the game's equipment screen, there's actually no equipment screen on when you pause the game, unlike in Ocarina of Time. So, um, they had to find some way to allow, allow use of a secondary item, or a secondary weapon, and they just decided to have, you know, a regular sword button, and as well as just a item. You can't really use your shield, but either way, it's really powerful, and you're, you'll see me use it quite a bit. Because it's just that good. Alright, um, so if we head over here, uh, behind this giant waterfall, and this is where you need light arrows for, so let's see what we got going on over here. It seems somehow you have managed to send Ikana's wandering spirits to a peaceful rest, but outside of Ikana, there are still swarms of wandering spirits with lingering regrets. The ones in this room want to meet you again and have been waiting for, uh, here for quite a while. Go see them if you like it. I'm sure they'll welcome you. I wonder how he knows that I've seen things before when this is like the first time I've ever seen him. Doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, but let's go. Alright, let's see what we got going on here. Ooh, uh, Dynalphos. Okay. So yeah, so this room is basically just a whole mini-boss gauntlet. Oh, there's three of them. And this is the power of the Great Fairy Sword. One spin slash um, just defeats those guys in one hit. It's amazing. But yeah, so this cave is a, a, a gauntlet of mini-bosses that we've seen already. And anytime you defeat a mini-boss, you get a silver rupees. That's 400 rupees. Essentially 400 rupees that you're getting. Which is a lot. But yeah, not every mini-boss. It's more so like the main mini-bosses where you get um, dungeon items. I, I guess that's what determines which mini-boss returns here. So let's see what's going on here in this room. And because they have they have they have not reused this guy as a boss fight enough, he is once again back. All right, here we go. Uh, but this time with light arrows, he's really powerful. Yeah, these guys are really easy because we have we have really powerful items to deal with these guys. Where, where, where is he? Oh, here he is! Oh, I got him! And I froze in the process. Okay, there we go. Okay. That was... <laughs> a little bit, a little bit challenging. 
It kind of it, it's kind of hard because um, where I'm recording right now, the sun's kind of glaring through my screen, so it's a little hard to see. I know I'm using that as an excuse, but yeah. All right, so make our way out here. Go ahead and head this way now. We're gonna go into this room. See what we got. Empty room, eh? Well, it ain't so easy. Look at that. Well, that's kind of scary. In like in the perspective, like in if you're in this perspective, you just kind of like no, you just kind of look up randomly, and then all of a sudden, everything's staring right into your soul. All right, but um, but yeah. So uh, this time with Deku nuts, this this, uh, this boss is really. Um, it makes getting rid of these levels so much easier with Death and Alright, okay, nice, alright. If you do a vertical slash with the, with the sword, then you can also hit, hit the eyeball that way, too. Let's see, let's see if I can get it. Yep, there we go. And it does so much damage. Okay, nice. Wow, three hits? Dang. This is so fast. My goodness, this is the power of the Great Fairy Sword. We're gonna power through this through the rest of the game with the sword. Just let I'll have y'all know. It's just kind of unfortunate you get this like towards the end of the game. When um you don't really have much use for the sword. Um until you get to the final boss, I guess. Uh, but, um, uh, there's still quite a lot left that I haven't done, so we're not quite ready to beat the game right now. Alright, so, um, the Garo is back here. Oh my goodness, this guy's so fast. But thankfully with Deku Nuts, you can stun him. Like this, and there we go. Yeah, really simple stuff. And I didn't show, show off the, that because of time and not have any Deku Nuts. Well, I couldn't make things a little bit easier. It's kind of an underrated item here. Where Deku Nuts are actually just like re these really powerful items, but not very many people use them because you don't really have any need to use Deku Nuts. You really are an amazing person. It seems you somehow managed to heal their souls, but I shall vanish soon myself. Well then! Dang, it's like, again, it's like Angel Beats, you know? Everyone disappears as soon as, um, they are satisfied with their, with, with their life. Okay. And... There's our heart piece. Very, very nice. And then, that doesn't look like the person we were interacting with. I wonder what's up with that. Alright, but anyway, that is that. Alright, um, now it is time to do something else since we're pretty much done here. And I'm actually going to go back to the Great Bay Coast. You might notice that in between recording, my in-game timer, it, my in-game time is different. And that's because I went ahead and defeated George off-screen. Um, and that's because there's something that happens when you uh, beat the dungeon, but I didn't do it because it didn't really come to my mind. This is a semi-blind playthrough, so there are things that I didn't know that I just don't really know about, but um, anyway, this boat's here. This is the same boat that the, if you remember, the Guru Pirates were trying to uh, use in order to get to the Great Bay Temple, but they failed, and therefore, this is their boat that they left behind. So if we go ahead and use this boat, you might notice that there's a little island over here, and this is how you're going to get to this island, there's no other way. So you have to beat the dungeon in order to um, uh, get over here, otherwise this boat won't be there. 
And then we go and talk to this guy. He's got stranded. Now that the seas are back to normal, I've started a little business aimed at tourists. If you pay 20 rupees, I'll show you a jumping game that has a really big prize. If you're up for it, go to that island in the center. Okay. Doesn't sound too bad. Alright, let's see what we got. Alright. Alright, well, here we go. I'm going to light the torches on each of the surrounding four islands in a particular order. Jump to the island that has the lit torch, and if you can jump to it before the torch goes out, you'll get a point. If you get 20 or more points within the time limit, you'll get a big prize, but it'll cost 20 rupees for one try. Sure thing. Alright, here we go. Alright, this minigame is really easy. You just gotta pay attention to which torch is um, being lit up. Um, a really good strategy for this minigame is kind of blind your, position yourself to where you can actually see three torches. So that way if none of the three torches that you see on the screen is light up, then you know that the one that's off screen is the one that you want to jump to. Um, if you fall off, then you just lose the minigame. So you want to be a little bit careful, but it's really easy. You can get 20 points very easily and the time limit that they give you for this minigame is super lenient. Like, I'm probably going to have a minute left by the time I get 20 points. So, you can keep scoring, but you won't really benefit if you get more than 20. So you could just stand the middle as soon as you get 20 after the minigame. Now, I believe you lose points if you jump to the wrong torch during this minigame. So, obviously, don't do that. See, so yeah, I'm just gonna just get as much as I can. It seems a little risky because you do have the chance of falling off. And if you do fall off, then you lose all your points and you just lose the minigame automatically, just like that. But, well, I'm a rebel. I don't like waiting. So, I may, I just, I may as well just start entertaining myself. Let's see how much I can get. Can I get 40? That'd be so amazing if I can get 40. Oh god, I almost jumped to the wrong one. That would've been bad. No, I couldn't get 40. It's over. Alright. And so... Uh-oh, that was a little too easy. Heck yeah, it was too easy. I, I mean, if you reduced the time limit a little bit, it would have been a little bit harder, but... Yeah. But our reward is a heart piece. And I was thinking of saving up to buy a big ship. With a heart piece? I mean, maybe if you sell the heart piece for some profit, then... Maybe. But at the same time, you chose to run this business, so maybe that was on you. Maybe you should have used your, used your resources wisely. Okay, if you are playing on the third day uh, at 10 p.m., then um, there is something cool that we can get. And that is to head over here in the curiosity shop, since it opens at 10 p.m. Uh, and... Um, I don't, I don't serve masqueraders. Okay, fine. All right. Welcome. You gotta look around. I'm doing a, a special sale. Check it out. Tonight's bargain is the all night mask for use at bedtime. I forgot when this made, uh, when this was made, but it sure is a freaky mask. When you put it on, you can try and try, you can try and fall asleep, but you won't be able to. Pretty creepy, huh? Yeah, it's pretty creepy. Not being able to fall asleep. You know, I like my sleep. But on the third night. The, the, this mask will appear, the all night mask. It's 500 rupees, so you need the giant swap for this. So we're gonna go ahead and buy it. Now, in order for the giant's mask, to, or for the all night mask to appear, you need to save the bomb lady in the night of the, in midnight of the first night. Um, otherwise this won't happen, which means that in between, um, I, I did work back in time just so I could get this mask right here. And I went on a huge rupee grind here. And, um, basically, um, I spent quite a long time on every night 
to grind 500 rupees at a time shooting light arrows at bubbles nearby the Akana region. And if you deposit a total of 5,000 rupees, then that is the uh, maximum amount of rupees that the bank teller can hold for you. And then the bank teller will give you a heart piece. Now, previously we have we have deposited 200 rupees for an adult's wallet, and then if you if you get a total of 5,000 rupees deposited, then you get a heart piece. So it takes quite a while to grind rupees. There's several ways to, where you can grind rupees. Uh, but, um, I feel like grinding, um, the bubbles with light arrows nearby the Akana region is easily the best way. The last thing that I want to do is, once again, I did go back in time, uh, is I'm going to go to the post office. Now, the post office, this is interesting. So, during the day, the postman will be running around Clock Town delivering letters. He will come back here to the post office at 1 p.m. to sleep, and then he will leave the office again at around 3, and then we'll come back here at nighttime, and then he'll be doing mental training, I guess? And uh, here's something I'll, I'll explain later. But let's go ahead and do this here. Yeah. Five, four, six, or four, five, six. Wow, you startled me. Do not disrupt my training. In my mind, I am exactly, I am running for exactly 10 seconds without looking at a clock. I was in the middle of mental training. I, you may make fun of me, but this is quite difficult. Will I try? No. Okay. And you are disrupting me. Okay, that's good to know. Um, but, uh, yeah. All right. Now I'm gonna talk to you. Four, five, six, yada, yada. Those, those, those ears, something, I don't know. Okay. All right, here we go. So, this is really difficult, and I'm very serious when I say this is very difficult. Oh, so close. One frame off. Oh, jeez. It'll cost me two rupees? I don't have two rupees. Oh, my goodness. I can't believe it. Oh, they're fake. You startled me. Okay, that's what he says. Okay. All right, let's try this again. Here we go. Oh, yeah, second try. Holy crap. That is amazing. You, you have reflex is suitable for a postman. As thanks for showing me something impressive, I give you this. Ugh. There we go. We get a heart piece. Okay. I can't believe this. I'll have to train more and more. So, it's possible to do this um, without the bunny hood. But the problem is, if you do this without the bunny hood, you can't see the clock, which makes it really hard. What's really difficult about that minigame is you got to press the button on the exact frame that it hits 10. Um, and in the N64 version, that was very difficult because sometimes, even when you hit it frame perfectly, then the game won't give it to you because some time intervals uh, are skipped due to the frame rate that the original version ran at, which was 20 frames per second. This game runs at 30 frames per second, so the minigame is a little bit easier in that sense, but it's still difficult. Um, there's a story about the post office. I went through three practice simulations in between recording because the internet basically lied to me. Either that, or I'm doing something very wrong. I didn't want to go back in time just to do one thing, 
And so when I was doing my practice session before starting recording, I want to do that minigame on the second day. The internet says that I could do it on the second day, but the time that you do it is is a different time on the second day. So I got to that time, which is supposed to be between 5 and 12 a.m., and nothing happened. I couldn't go inside the post office at all. I went through the second day three times in a row. And on the third time that I went to the second day, I literally waited the entire day at the po um, right by the post office to wait for the postman to go inside his office so I can go inside and play his minigame. And the entire time, all 24 hours of the second day, could not go into the post office. So, um, I came to the conclusion that I'm just going to do it on the first day. And it's very inefficient with cycle routing, but in short, it's either the internet lied to me or I did something wrong. Which, it could be that I did something wrong if the internet says that I, I could, that it's possible for me to get that heart piece in the second day. Either way, that is going to be it for this episode of The Legends of Majora's Mask. And next time, we're going to see what else we can do. Because there's still a lot that we have to do before it's time for us to beat the game. So thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.